Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and I love myself a good cheap tool, just like anybody else. Uh, emphasis on the good part, of course. Uh, so I did a video a few months ago on, uh, are there any good tools on those sites that are Chinese dropship sites like Timu, Alibaba, Banggood, that type of stuff. And lots of people like those videos. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. Um, but I did get some comments from people saying they're uncomfortable giving their personal information to those sites. They don't want to give their credit card information and stuff. And I get that. So uh, this video, what I'm trying to do is I look for products that are for sale on those, but are now also for sale on Amazon. Um, so maybe you feel more comfortable purchasing from Amazon, uh, you know, easy returns, two day shipping, et cetera. Um, so I bought 10 tools, all with my own money, not sponsored. I've had them for three months, so I've put them through their paces. They're actually quite dirty, so they won't look new and shiny in this video. Um, I did email one of the companies, GoingMake, a question. They then subsequently sent me out every tool they've ever made. So I have tons of GoingMake tools here in the shop, um, but they're all cheap tools. They're, um, so I, I wanted to be open and honest with you that I have a couple more tools that I'm going to add into the video, so I think I took it to 15. Um, that's why you'll see a whole bunch of going makes in there. It's because I thought they were pretty good ones, um, not because they sent it to me and I'm not getting paid or anything. So it's my honest opinion. Take it for what it is. Let's get to the tools. Quai Gutch pocket hole clamp for $11.30. This clamp utilizes a metal body and screw plus head uh, and then plastic handle and plastic insert for a pocket hole. So this is a pocket hole clamp and what it is specifically used for is if you are using uh, pocket holes to make a butt joint, which is two pieces of wood just kind of coming together like this. Uh, what you do is you insert the white piece into your pocket hole and then you can clamp it to the next piece of wood. So uh, why do you need to use this? Well, uh, when you're using pocket holes, the screw is going in at a diagonal. And so if you're not clamped down well with your two pieces of wood, it's gonna actually shift, it's gonna pull that piece of wood uh, at that diagonal direction. So it's going to misalign your piece of wood. You really need to clamp it down. Just hand holding uh, will result in some bad pocket hole lineups uh, over time. So it holds well. It does function. Um, is it good? Not really. Is it bad? Not really. Uh, it's kind of in the middle. So what my complaint about this um, guy is, is that there is a big air gap here. I would really like for this to be sitting flush against this long piece of metal that's on here. So these types of clamps have a screw here where I can back off the white piece of plastic. So if I back it off all the way to where it's practically, you know, we've taken it out and I put it just barely back in, and then I go to put this back in again, there is still an air gap. See how I can rotate this. Uh, so honestly, this needs to be a little shorter. Now maybe you say, eh, I'll just cut it, um, but hey, that's up to you. Um, for $11, you might decide, hey, this is okay to keep in my bag. Um, you know, I would recommend if you're gonna do that, do two of these because you wanna be holding it in at least two points before you start screwing in. Um, I have no buy or not buy opinion on this one. This is very much a middle of the road and up to you. It's really gonna base on price point. Uh, I would say that the C-clamp style ones uh, of the uh, pocket hole clamps are what I prefer to use. Finisil Precision Pocket Rule, $9.99. This is a $9 tool and it should be a lot more than that, honestly, because the build quality on here is excellent. It is uh, milled aluminum. It is precise. I checked it on my table saw for both making sure that it's completely flat on all sides, as well as when you put on the aluminum milled slide that it then generates a full 90 degree angle, which it does accurately. So um, precision, great. I took a calipers to it to make sure that uh, all of the laser inscribed marks on here were accurate, they are. Um, so for $9, this is a great tool. Now, some little features. You have a notch right here, and this is for your mechanical pencil. So if you're going to use this to make a scribe line all the way down, that notch keeps your pencil from sliding off the tip, which happens a lot when I use things like uh, 
my combo square. You know, it's perfectly flat right here, so sometimes when I'm doing that action, it slides off and, you know, so that little notch is nice. Additionally, it has three pre-drilled holes at half inch, three quarter, and one inch. It has metric on the top and imperial on the bottom. It also has a fractional uh, gauge over on the side, so you can put it right next to your wood, uh, and it will tell you how thick your wood is as well. So uh, holding power on these two little knobs is great. I'm not using a ton of force, but let's see if I can slide it. No. Uh, so. Excellent, excellent tool, $9, can't beat it. Daydoor Bench Dog Clamp, two pack for $29.99. So this two pack of clamps is really, really nice. I like the way they look aesthetically. Um, they are made of stainless steel and brass, the brass is to help prevent marring where possible. And so when we're using this, what we wanna do is place it down into our dog hole, but before we push it all the way down, we want to spin it and get it as close to our piece of wood as possible while the handle is in this straight position. You can just spin it real easy when it's like this. If you push it all the way down to the table, um, you know, you, it gets so close that you can't do that anymore and you have to start using the lever action, pulling it around, pushing it over, pulling it around, pushing it over. So I try to get it as close as possible because that's just a little bit more tedious. So once I'm pretty close, I'm still holding my clamp a little bit off of my table because I actually gouged my assembly table here with the little brass pin that holds this handle on because I had it too close. Now, once you have it cranked down and you can really crank these, uh, this piece of wood is not moving. My whole assembly table is moving and I'm even trying to move it in a direction that has no brace support. It's pinching it from the sides right now. So that's pretty good. Holding power is very nice on these. So um, I do like these quite a bit. Uh, I will say I did notice on this one, um, there is a metal shard that was left over from production. I'm gonna have to shave that off with a file because I will stab myself with this. So it might've just been a one-off type of thing, but you know, you need to think about that when you're looking at your tools. Overall though, I would say that the build quality on this is excellent. And this is a really cool clamp for me to add to my collection. Vonzen Hand Jack, $7.99. So this is a hand jack and uh, construction quality kind of low, I would say. Uh, this foam rubber is basically over top of a thin piece of metal. Uh, and what this hand jack does is as you squeeze it, the two uh, plates separate. So what you should be able to do with it is slide it under a really heavy object, and then as you squeeze it a whole bunch of times, it will jack up that object. So I've had this for several months. I've had a few times where I've needed to use it and it failed. So obviously what I was trying to lift it with was too heavy. Um, sometimes, it works and then it doesn't work on the same one. So, you know, you need to kind of uh, position it a little bit. Let's try this out on one of my really heavy carts in the shop. This is my hardwood lumber cart for scraps. Um, let's see if we can lift this up because I mean, this is very, very heavy. Okay, you can see that it's moving a little bit. All right, it looks like we're gonna do it. Okay, I was able to lift it to the top of its value. Um, it was hard on my hands, but it did do it. So it did it. You know, the interesting thing is when I first got this, I thought it was a piece of junk, especially after it failed. I think I was doing something with uh, an appliance where I was trying to lift it up and I was like, oh, let me grab this thing. I just got it in and I couldn't get it to lift it up. So I had a pretty negative opinion of it, especially because the build construction is kind of cheap, but you know what? I have been able to use it. It does work. Um, there are better ones out there, but at $7, if you just want to pick these up for, you know, the once in a while type of thing when you need it, $7 is a good price for it. Going Make Corner Clamps 2-Pack for $29.99. This 2-Pack of Going Make Aluminum Milled Corner Clamps are really, really nice. I like them and I like them more than my current ones that I own. 
So I'm happy I have these. So why? Uh, my current corner clamp is the, your typical L-shaped style. So uh, because this is a triangle, not only am I able to do 90 degrees, but I can also rotate it and do 45 degree clamp ups too. So it gives me an extra uh, mode of use for that. But uh, a couple other things. The big one is it has this lip that goes all the way around the top of it. And what is that good for? is to act as a third set of hands for me. So when you're putting together, and you know, these are all loose right now, uh, it can be a little bit of a juggling act, but because the lip is there, it just sits right on top of the two boards, holding it in place while I get my clamp ready, and I can just clamp it down like that. If I had attempted to do that with this one, I would have to hold it while getting the clamp situated and then done. So it's a lot to do with one hand. Now I have two hands, it makes it so much easier. So that to me right there, the big selling point, big time. Um, another selling point, this has an aluminum foot to it. And I think I have, oh, I do. This is the foot that came with that red one. It's plastic, uh, so this does not have the holding power that this one does. Uh, so I like that quite a bit. Lastly, I like that the scribe lines are on the top. The one that I have, these scribe lines are on the side. So when you put the wood in front of it, you can't see anything. Um, of course, I know why it's there. If you have a skinny piece of wood, you can kind of line it up. But you can do that same action from the top, and I can always see the top. So I'd much rather have the scribe lines on the top. Uh, for the same cost of buying that, you can get this. Better construction, more functionality. I like it quite a bit. Zohana Manual Wire Stripper 2688. So yes, this is not a woodworking tool, but uh, if you watch my channel, you know that I own a Christmas light company, so I do a lot of stuff with wire. So I kind of snuck this one in, uh, but if you are a woodworker, you're awesome. You most likely do all sorts of other DIY projects, including wire stuff. So this wire stripper is really, really poorly made. Um, it is a knockoff of a name brand one. It even has the exact spot where that logo goes and it's just not present on this one. Uh, but this one is really cheaply made. I have strong hands, I rock climb. Um, it's really, really hard for me to get this to close with one hand. Not because the springs are really strong, it's just like out of alignment. So it really helps for me to use two hands. Uh, you're able to rotate this gauge in the front and then it has a razor blade that should slice the uh, covering on your wire. So what you would do is you find the correct size for your wire. There we go. You put your wire in, and then I honestly need two hands to get it lined up and down. And now I'm squeezing hard with two hands. Pull through. And it grabbed in like one little part halfway through on that pull. You saw it snag, but otherwise it just scraped the covering on this wire. So um, this is a little bit of a harder covering, I will admit that, but um, junky. I wouldn't waste your money on this, and I, this is like in the $20 range. Definitely don't waste your money on this tool. Going Make Concealed Hinge Jig 49.98. So I'll tell you right now, this is my favorite tool from the video. Um, I don't want to bash this other company, so I have their logo taped over, but I'm sure you might know who it is. Um, this is the big name brand's concealed hinge guide, and it is plastic. And this is the one that I own. Um, this is the one that I've used for countless doors, um, but it's starting to wear out, and I'm stripping the, the screw here. Um, it's just showing that it's plastic over time. It's not, it's consumer use, it's not for heavy use. Um, so I went looking for an aluminum one and I found this one and this is so much better. Now, you might also be wondering, Justin, $50, this is not that cheap of a tool. Well, this is $90. It comes with a clamp uh, for this one. Um, this being $50 at almost half the price makes it pretty cheap for what it is. So that's why I'm including it in here and the fact that I like it so much. So um, all aluminum milled construction. The big super unique thing about it, it has a toggle clamp attached to the bottom. So if you want to use this, basically you would put it up against the edge of your cabinet door, click that and you're clamped in. 
that easy. Um, I personally find myself when I'm doing a whole bunch of cabinet doors, I get lazy with it because you're usually using two clamps on the side. And so I'll end up holding it with my hand and you shouldn't do that. You really need to clamp it down. So by having a toggle clamp that's built in and it's just one little motion, it makes it a lot easier. Now, in order to use this though, if I tried to sit this on my tabletop, it doesn't work. So you'd have to extend your cabinet door a little bit over the side of your table. If you don't like that idea, that's fine. Two screws right here, the entire assembly comes off and you can use whatever clamping method you want. It gives you choice though, and that's what I really like. So um, the ability to choose to use this or not, awesome. Now, uh, on the rest of the construction, we have metal pegs that are in pre-slotted holes. Additionally, we have a third peg, which this thing doesn't have either, and I can put it on the right or left side. And what that will enable me to do is always place this three inches from the top or the bottom of my cabinet door. That way, nicely spaced, uh, it basically blocks it in there and I can't push it any further. So, like that quite a bit. Now, there's another unique feature on here. You might be wondering, what is this hole in the front? Well, dust collector hookup. So, or shop vac, whichever you prefer. Um, these types of uh, drill bits make just a mound of shavings for every single one of these that you do. So being able to hook up a shop vac or dust collector to it is nice. Uh, for health reasons, I'm really focusing on that this year on the channel. So I love any time that I can hook up uh, dust collection to a tool. The uh, drill bit is in its nice aluminum enclosure. It has a scribe gauge set up over here so you can set the depth pretty easy. You place it in and then twist it to lock it into place. So now it's not going anywhere. Um, that's nice. After you're done with that and you're going to place your guide holes for screws, this has four different positions that you can put these in. Uh, also with metal guide holes, they include the drill bit as well. So this isn't going to wear out being that this is all metal. And it gives me four different options. This one, only has plastic pre-made holes in here, which have been getting wider and wider as I've been using them. Um, and they don't always fit with every type of hinge that I'm doing. So again, choice. So overall, I think this is a fantastic tool. This is why I contacted Going Make. Um, I was really, really happy with this. And my suggestion to them was, I wanna see this toggle clamp that's removable on a couple other of their tools that they have, which we'll see later in the video. So if they can add this to some of those things, just like knocking it out of the park. Chow Sedoin countersink bit with limiter, $7.49. Countersink bits are one of the things that I use all of the time in the shop, and they're super useful because they use this extra cutter head at the top to make the top of your drilled hole wider so that when you put a screw down in it, it hides the head of the screw under the plane of the wood. Super useful. So the one that I use a lot of, and I have multiples of them, is this Amana one, uh, because it lets you set your depth. Uh, it will stop me once I hit a certain point. And since it has a ball bearing in here, uh, it doesn't mar up my project. So uh, the problem with that is it's about 50 bucks. It is excellent though, and I highly recommend those. But $50 for some people is just out of the price range. So this $7 one, I was very interested to try. It has a, uh, let's call it a washer at the front that freely spins. So it should act very similar to that expensive one that I have. You can extend your drill bit out as far as you need to, and then you use an Allen key, which they do include one in the kit. Um, not this one though. And you just tighten up your no way. <laughs> I just stripped it out. Well, continuing on. And we're losing stuff. Oh, no. Oh, I snapped the bit. Oh, geez. I didn't strip it. I broke the drill bit by cranking down the, uh, the thing. Wow. Well, you saw me just break the bit on here, but don't worry. You can still continue to use this. You just take that bit out and put a new one in you're basically purchasing the housing that the bit is going in. So um, this actually does all right. It isn't as good as my expensive one, but at $7, this is much better 
than if you were to use one of these solid uh, drill bit collars. What happens with these is as you drill in, it's going to continue spinning once it hits that wood and it's going to be, it's going to leave a big circle on your wood. These are not a great option. This one that has this spinning uh, washer at the front of it helps to prevent that circle from forming most of the time. This one's not perfect, but um, uh, for $7, it's, uh, it's worth it if you're budget constrained. Going Make Shelf Pin Jig 3285. So this is a shelf pin jig, and what this is used for is making all those uniform holes inside your kitchen cabinets and bookshelves and all sorts of other stuff. Um, basically, you're gonna put your drill bit through each one of these, and so its spacing is uniform. And then you also utilize one of these pins. So as you do your seven holes right here and then you're ready to move it again, you wanna make sure that you maintain that spacing. So you can drop this pin in, and then drop it into the hole that it created and it will then line you up for the next six uh, holes that you're going to make. As you can see here, it has a uh, removable collar that you use to position things. So it has a row here and you can move it back to this other row. And then underneath it has these stop pins, which are what sets it up to the wood. And these also have three different positions that you can move them to. So there's a lot of functionality as far as where we can place this. Now, this is the tool that I really uh, contacted Going Make on because I was like, put that toggle clamp that we had on that um, other gauge. So they're thinking about it, but if you added that toggle clamp that could be removed because you can't always use it with this, um, it would just make this out of the park. But um, I still really like this one quite a bit and I think it's a good value for the money. Yakima's self-centering doweling jig, $12.99. So this is a self-centering doweling jig, and what this is used for is if you want to drill uh, holes into sides of wood to put a dowel in to then uh, marry them together, this helps you make sure that you're always drilling in the center of that piece of wood. So it's uh, pretty easy. It comes with three different sized collars. So you just screw on the collar that you would like to the top. It has ball bearings on both sides. So when you place it on the wood, it will slide. Uh, very easily. When you place it on the wood, you twist it so that it kind of locks itself in place, but it always locks itself in place in the center of the wood. So now you just slide it up and down the wood till you find your mark. You take your drill bit, put it in the collar. Now, it literally happened. I was wondering if it would, and I didn't try to make it happen. It moved. Uh, now, I was just doing an example, so I didn't have a mark on here, but it's really actually hard to keep it in place. It wants to wiggle. So you know how you get drill bit wiggle, how you start it in one spot, but then it kind of moves over a little bit? That just happened when I drilled this hole. So um, it did not go where I intended it to go. With that warning that I just showed you, you have to be very conscious about you're really holding it tight. I was wondering about clamping on it, which I think you can do. Let's try. You know, let's not say think, let's do, Justin. So, let's see if I apply a clamp to this. If that will hold it in place. Yes, so, if you are capable of clamping it, it won't move, it will find the center every time. If you're in an application where you can't clamp it, um, you definitely need to make sure that you're applying a lot of pressure with your hand and twisting it really hard while you're doing that drill so that it doesn't wander. JC Fance 3D Carpenter Square, $13.99. Going Make 3D Carpenter Square, $24.99. For my last purchase tool, I have this $14 3D square. Um, Going Make also sent me out their $24 uh, 3D square, so I figured I would compare the two. Um, a big use for these, and I don't really use these that much, to be honest, is that it will transcribe a line from one side all the way around the corner onto the other side. So pretty handy there. Uh, they all also have 45 degree angles built in, and usually they have some tape marks on here as well. Uh, on Going Make's version, it has this blue pin, and this is a very cool feature, though I have a complaint. 
Um, so what this does is it gives us several positive stops. And so if I want to make a 30 degree angle with this, I can slide the pin in and I can place it up here and draw a line and it will be at a 30 degree angle. I can move that pin to another one too and make a different angle. Problem is this breaks my cardinal rule of if you have a tool with a little piece, the little piece needs a home, um, especially when it's not being used. So I can't leave it in this hole all the time because then it gets in my way from doing my other actions. So I would then take it off and put it to the side and I'm gonna lose it. So uh, instead of this being aluminum, I would recommend this being some sort of magnetic material so that I can smack it in here with a magnet. Uh, maybe there's a hole that it can go in. You have this big void here, there's something we could do in here, uh, but having this loose like that is a big negative for me. Um, additionally, it also has all of these scribe holes down here, so we can take, see, this is in the way. Um, we can put our lines on things like that. Um, so it has some extra features over this basic model. Um, personally for me, I think I'm going with the $14 one. Um, again, I don't use this type of stuff that often, so for me, I would rather go with a cheaper thing, but this does have added features, so if these interest you, I'd go with the Going Mate. Going Make Thin Rip Jig 2888. For our next bonus tool from Going Make, it is a thin rip jig. And I'm a big fan of safety, and this makes ripping thin pieces of wood pretty safe. So what you do to use this is you put it to where it just kisses the blade, uh, specifically the teeth on the blade. You then tighten it down. And then uh, you have metric and imperial on here. I'm going to move the guide right here on the imperial side to where it lines up with, you know, a nice uh, legible main spot. So I'm putting it to three and one quarters, which is the closest spot that I like out of there. Of course, you can pick any spot. I'm tightening the guide down. So basically, I know, all right, I'm at three and one quarter inch. So when I move this down, I can now move this this way and based off of three and one quarters inch, if I move it to three and a half, I know that I'm cutting a quarter inch strip. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now to point out this uh, bearing only turns in this direction. If I try to turn it this way, it doesn't work. So it's an anti-kickback tool. Uh, the way you use this then is you can put any size piece of wood against your fence. Your fence is going against this to tell it where it needs to run forward on. So now we're going to lock our fence down, turn on our saw. And we have a nice quarter of an inch ripped piece of wood done safely. All aluminum construction, it has the one-way bearing on here, so it helps reduce kickback possibilities. Has two different sizes of um, rail guides, just in case you have a different size than your standard uh, miter rail. And it's nice. I like safety products, so this will help you if you need to rip uh, thin products. And you can even set it up where you're just consistently ripping the exact same thing. If you we're going to be doing some edge banding or some veneering. Uh, this is something that would really come in handy. Going make T squares from $25.98 to $59.98. What is a cheap tools video without T squares? Of course, um, going make has their own design where they have a lip here again, just like how they did on that corner clamp. So when you're placing it on wood, it actually sits all the way out to the sides. Um, that kind of prevents this from happening. Uh, so I think that's nice. Of course, all milled aluminum, um, you know, going up from 12 all the way up to this 32 inch big guy uh, with all of the scribe holes all the way down, of course. You know, when you compare these to the big red uh, aluminum measurement company, they sell this one for $190 whereas uh, this is $59 from Going Make all the way down to 25. So uh, the price is right. I like to be able to be rough with my tools. If I spent that much money on one of these, I would be treating it with kit gloves all the time. I honestly don't want that. So um, I think T-squares of this price range are a much better bet. 
All right, I think we've talked about enough tools. The video is getting a little bit long. To my regular viewers, um, I just bought a whole bunch of new camera equipment, and this is my first video that I'm shooting on it. So please give me some feedback on the video quality uh, of this picture, if you think it's better or worse. I spent a lot of money on all this camera stuff, so I hope it's better, but there are a lot of things I have to play around with. If you got some good content out of this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. That's really what helps me grow the channel. And as always, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next video.